hello beautiful people welcome to my channel if you are a subscriber welcome back to another video my name is ada and i make faith-based and lifestyle content if you are new here then let me explain to you what this series is so this is a series i do on my channel called studying bible characters where i pick a character from the bible i talk about their story and also the lessons that we can learn from them if this is something that you're interested in and you would love to watch more of this video please 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 give this video a thumbs up and also subscribe to this channel fun fact this is the second time i am filming this video <laughs> let's just say that it's only god that allowed me to not cry um i was editing and that was when i realized that um the the part that had the lessons yeah that clip just stopped working got corrupted or whatever but this time you're going to see this video because no one's get corrupted in jesus name okay so this is your cue to please 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 like this video and subscribe and also share with somebody that you think will love this video okay let's get into the video so in this episode i'm going to be talking about two different people peter and judas judas iscariot that's his full name yes and if you don't know let me give you a backstory about them i mean that's what i'm here for okay so peter and judas both of them were disciples of jesus christ Jesus actually had 12 disciples so these people were part of that gang now i'm going to be touching on just the parts where these characters are really prominent in this story so the story might be a bit patchy forgive me i'll try and make it very seamless but i'm just going to be touching on the important parts where these characters actually show up so as we know jesus was wanted at that time by every leading person every elder they wanted him they wanted to kill him they wanted to punish him because who is this man coming and coming from nowhere healing people saying that it's god telling them about heaven telling them about one god that loves them from, like he was doing so much in their eyes you get because they're like who do you think you are where do you even come from and they wanted to find something that they could just pin on him and just you know get him out of the way one way or the other whether he's innocent or not they did not care all they wanted was him to just get out of the way so judas took this opportunity and decided that he was going to you know make some money from this whole shenanigan and he went to the leading priest and told them that you know jesus is my guy you know i work with him all the time i've been hearing that you're looking for him don't worry just give me small thing i'll bring him to your doorstep and funny enough i mean obviously they took the offer and they offered him 30 pieces of silver and i'm going to search off what 30 pieces of silver is in naira today i mean hopefully google gives me a right amount whatever google gives me i'm going to put it on the screen here so you can see what judas accepted to sell jesus to betray jesus basically not even to sell him to betray him he accepted 30 pieces of silver and he told them you know what sit back relax and enjoy the show now fast forward to the last supper so the last supper is like the last meal that jesus had with his disciples they were all eating together and jesus had a few things to say to them so i'm going to read it straight from the bible if you're new here i forgot to add in the beginning that you need to hold your bible okay and your journal or whatever you write with because class is in session i'm going to be reading from matthew 26 20 to 25 and i'm reading new living translation you can read any translation you want i just really like this translation okay. when it was evening jesus sat down at the table with the 12 disciples while they were eating he said the truth is one of you will betray me greatly distressed one by one they began to ask him i'm not the one am i lord he replied one of you who is eating with me now will betray me for i the son of man must die as the scriptures declared long ago but how terrible it will be for my betrayer far better for him if he had never been born judas the one who would betray him also asked teacher i'm not the one am i <laughs> jesus told him you have said it yourself 
I wonder what was going through Judas' mind at that moment because they never said anything about him feeling guilty in that moment. Imagine you knowing that you're the one that's going to betray somebody and you're saying, Oh, will, you, will I betray you? And Jesus replies, You know, you've said it. You, I don't need to. You've already said it by yourself. I don't even know what he was thinking at that moment. That's one of the things I want to ask Judas when I see him. <laughs> After this conversation, Jesus took a loaf of bread, gave them and told them, this is my body. And he also gave them wine and said, this is my blood, that they should eat it and drink of it. This is what we know today as the Holy Communion. I don't know if you take Holy Communion in your church, but if you do, then this is where it all started from. Now, after this, Jesus still had a few things to say. I mean, he was not done. He still had a few things to say i'm going to be reading matthew 26 31 to 35 this time and it says tonight all of you will desert me jesus told them for the scripture says god will strike the shepherd and the sheep of the flock will be scattered but after i have been raised from the dead i will go ahead of you to galilee and meet you there peter declared even if everyone else deserts you, I never will. Peter, Jesus replied, The truth is, this very, <laughs> sorry. this very night, before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. No, Peter insisted. Not even if I have to die with you, I will never deny you. And all the other disciples vowed the same. You know? Why didn't the other disciples, why didn't one of them come out and say, No, I will not deny you. Hey, hey, hey. After Peter said, they just said, you know what? Yes, me too, me too, me too. Anyways, we'll continue reading the story and we'll see what happened. So after the last supper, he took them to Gethsemane. Gethsemane. I don't know, I'm going to put the name here. I don't know if that's how it's pronounced. He took the disciples there and he went to pray. He actually told some of the disciples to stay and then he moved a bit forward. And took peter james and john with him and then he went ahead to pray while he was praying after he prayed for a while he came out he saw them sleeping and he was like you guys need to pray so that you will not be tempted mind you the bible also says that jesus was stressed he was anxious his sweat was like blood that is how anxious he was and he kept praying to god telling god that if this cup can pass over him because he already knew that this was the time that he would die like the time he would die was already drawing close he came out the second time they were still sleeping he told them they should pray obviously this is where you know the spirit is willing but the flesh is weak their flesh was weak and they were sleeping the third time he came out and he woke them up and said you guys are still sleeping my betrayer is here and sure enough judas iscariot started coming how can you finish eating Hey God, you finish eating with you finish eating with somebody now 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 and you now go and betray them. Ah <laughs> this old scripture when I was reading it, it just reminded me and just showed me that you know anybody that say, Oh my friend backstabbed me, my clinical, she did this thing, it not start today. Your friend did not start it. This is the origin. Judas is the CEO of the backstabbing community of the world hey he was sharp coming and he was coming with a mob behind him soldiers all of them they carried you know they carried different armors that they were going to use to catch jesus that he's not even carrying one armor like i don't understand ben is not a thief he already even gave them like a sign that you know what whenever when we reach that place anybody that i kiss is the person that you are looking for I'm going to read scripture to just tell you how all this happened. So I'm going to be reading Matthew 26, 47 to 50. And even as he said this, Judas, one of the 12 disciples, arrived with a mob that was armed with swords and clubs. They had been sent out by the leading priests and other leaders of the people. Judas had given them a prearranged signal. You will know which one to arrest when I go over and give him the kiss of greeting. So Judas came straight to Jesus. Greetings, teacher, he exclaimed and gave him the kiss. Jesus said, my friend, go ahead and do what you have come for. Then the others grabbed Jesus and arrested him. You know, it's the audacity for me. It's the audacity for Judas to even come 
and be like greetings oh wah, wah, hello like it's the audacity for me it is well with you judas iscariot anyways after that while they obviously they arrested him you know they grabbed him here and there and while they were doing that peter was like ah, what will i do what will i do he carried his sword and he caught one of the soldiers ear and guess what jesus did he picked up the ear and actually healed it like put it back and healed it for the soldier that was about to arrest him to go and kill him like i said again i do not know what was going to that soldier's mind because if i was a soldier i don't know if i'll continue anymore you guys can take this man i am not involved because i've received healing <laughs> like for real and that was actually so kind of jesus i mean it's jesus <laughs> it's not any other person i mean if it was any other person though, i would step on the ear very well immediately after this happened they took jesus away and all the other disciples fled without even blinking twice they've already gone but peter did not flee as he actually said he was following them like sneakily because he wanted to see where they would take jesus he wanted to see what would happen um probably just follow for following sake i mean this was jesus and he was he had vowed previously oh i'm not gonna leave you i will never deny you i will never kill you, kill you. which actually shows that um i know we always crucify peter a lot oh i'm already moving fast but just leave allow me i know we always crucify peter a lot and say oh peter he denied jesus three times oh he's a coward he's a this and that peter actually was a ride or die for jesus like let's be real the fact that he even followed and everything but you know things happen so let's read how peter denied jesus i'm going to be reading matthew 26 69 to 75 meanwhile as peter was sitting outside in the courtyard a servant girl came over and said to him you were one of those with jesus the galilean but peter denied it in front of everyone i don't know what you are talking about he said later out by the gate another servant girl noticed him and said to those standing around this man was with jesus of nazareth again peter denied it this time with an oath i don't know the man he said a little later some other bystanders came over and came over to him and said you must be one of them we can tell by your galilean accent peter said i swear by god i don't know the man and immediately the cock crowed suddenly jesus words flashed through peter's mind before the cock crows you will deny me three times and he went away crying bitterly it is well let's continue now that we know peter's story let's continue and see where judas ended so the next morning the leading priests gathered together and they were planning how they will get jesus killed basically you know what can we say what can we do how can we put two and two to actually make them kill him for what he has been doing because the truth is that they didn't really have any tangible evidence to sentence jesus to death they just wanted him dead and while they were doing this judas was obviously there and it just hit him that whoa they're actually going to kill jesus this is actually for real i don't know what he was thinking when he actually quoted him on maybe he thought that they would just arrest him and just maybe beat him and they just say i am the son of god Pyah! break through all the chains and all of that i mean i won't blame him for thinking that way anyways but that did not happen and it hit him he now felt so much guilt and so much remorse that he actually went back to the leading priest i mean not in front of everybody and told them that he did not want the money again he has committed sin please take the money back and probably release jesus when they're mind they're like okay sign us if you like return the money if you like don't return the money we are not releasing jesus we've gotten what we want whatever he threw the money on the floor and he left and according to the bible they didn't even want to use the money because it was like sinful dirty money so they actually use it to like open a graveyard or something like that anyway judas went back to wherever i went to whether his house or whatever and he actually unalived himself yes well youtube i don't want you to, to ban my account so you get what i mean when i say he unalived himself he hung himself and that was the end of judas and this is also the end of my story this is where my story ends i know there are a lot of patches obviously if you are a christian you know this story you know there are a lot of things that happen to jesus after him and there but 
like i said in this episode we're highlighting peter and judas and this is where their story ends for this episode now that we know the story of these two people let us go into the lessons that we can learn from their lives or their story however you want to put it as we can see peter and judas both committed sin similar sin if i, I if i say to so myself both of them betrayed denied however you want to put it they shall put jesus under the bus and they ended up differently after committing this sin peter decided to turn from his ways and if you know peter later he led churches he raised the dead he healed the sick peter was you know a prominent person in promoting the kingdom of god and also spreading the gospel but judas could not do that he ended up unaliving himself sorry i have to use censored language he ended up unaliving himself and that was because he could not forgive himself as much as we try to deny it sometimes we are actually judas because god has given us um free gift of salvation where we can actually come to him we can ask for forgiveness we can get mercy his mercy is new every morning but because we feel like we need to punish ourselves for whatever sin that we've done we actually continue to kill ourselves even if you don't kill yourself literally you actually kill yourself spiritually because you have decided that oh i don't want to forgive myself i don't want to you know i want i want to stay away from god i know he hates me i've done this i've done that and, you know you just don't want to accept that this person is giving you something for free i was watching a video recently and i can't even remember where exactly i watched it but it was recently if i remember i'll put it here if i don't it's fine but the person was saying that imagine um you buy a really expensive gift for your friend whether for their birthday or whatever occasion and you come to give them and then you give it to them and they're like oh my god no it's too much i can't accept it i am sorry i can't accept it mind you you probably saved for this gift though or you probably made sacrifices to get this gift you took out of your savings or you you know highest you took out of your savings to buy this gift for them you know putting a lot of effort saved for this knew that they wanted it you know ordered it or bought it anyway you shall made sacrifices one way or the other and imagine them rejecting the gift like legit rejecting the gift not like just saying that oh it's too much like they say oh no i can't collect it i'm sorry after all the effort that you put in and it's not like you're giving them expecting anything in return like you're just giving them because of the love that you have for them and they are rejecting it that's somewhat the same thing you do that's the same thing that judas did and sometimes you we do when we don't accept you know forgiveness from god or salvation that he's giving us for free i mean in the bible it says that it's a free gift one other thing that you need to know is that no matter how righteous you are it doesn't really equate to why god loves you sometimes you feel like god is like man where you know it's only if they are good to, even it's only if i'm good to him that he can be good to me because we too sometimes is until somebody is good to us that we're actually good to them for you to just be good to somebody and if they are even treating you bad you say oh i'm cutting off this person that is literally not how god works but sometimes our mind will trick us to think that that is how god works and then we are like oh you know um because i've done bad to him i know he's going to do bad to me he's not going to do bad to you if anything he wants you to come to him and <laughs> it's so funny because we think that when we are staying away from god when we are trying to punish ourselves for the sins that we've done we are actually you know doing good god is like wow you are punishing yourself you're not doing anybody good you're not doing yourself good you're not doing god good you are only doing the devil good because you've given him you know where he can put his foot where he can actually stand on and bully you into feeling guilty bully you into dying in your guilt rolling in whatever guilt that you're feeling rolling in your mud in your mess and saying oh i don't want to pray i don't want to do this he's happy because he cannot bank on that i know i've all got to that process where we commit one sin or the other and then we're like mm, i don't feel like going to go and the minute you gather up that courage to actually go and pray or ask for forgiveness or talk to god the devil is already standing you know how in cartoon like the devil will stand here and angel will stand here literally devil is already standing near your ear telling you that you that are praying <laughs> it's not you that <laughs> did this or did that and you're praying and you think god will really answer you that is where the devil will now 
you know continue to bank on because he knows that okay this is your weakness you already feel some type of way this is what he can use to separate you from god and the devil is a liar you need to continue telling yourself that you need to continue reminding yourself that the devil is a liar and the only thing he comes to do is to steal kill and destroy destroy you steal your joy steal that free gift away from you kill your spirit the, like he doesn't want you anywhere near god so any opportunity he will get he will use it he will expand it so don't even give him that opportunity because you're only helping him when you do that there is popular analogy that they always say that you don't clean yourself because before you go into the bathroom to have your bath you enter dirty you have your bath and you come out clean that is how it is when you come to the presence of god you don't need to you know look so righteous and do this and that to make yourself perfect for before you come to him because even if you are you feel like you're the most perfect person or you're the most righteous person ever first of all your righteousness is like filthy rags unto him and you cannot even be as righteous as jesus like even jesus that was so righteous they still even killed him they still even did a lot of things you may still went through in you know, a lot of hardship so that we can get to where we are so we can get this free gift that we're talking about today so basically just relax relax and rest because god already knows you and you hiding from him staying away from him does not mean that god does not know or do you think that is when you come to tell god your sins that he will not know and say wow you did that no he was there when he did that he was there when he did that so what's the use of actually hiding what's the use of running away from someone that already knows what you did and you already know his reaction to that you already know that there is forgiveness for you you know all you need to do is repent and turn away from your ways don't be a judas judas cut off every opportunity he could ever have to you know experience god to go to heaven to have salvation to give his life to christ he cut off every opportunity the minute he unalived himself and that is the same thing that we do like i said even if you don't kill yourself physically you kill yourself spiritually you kill everything that you know can connect you to god because you are trying to punish yourself personally i feel like you know forgiving people is hard but forgiving yourself is actually harder and this is what actually went on in judah's head and that's what even goes on in our heads sometimes to forgive yourself is so hard because you keep reminding yourself you want to punish yourself for what you did i mean if it's another person you can easily you know say oh you know i forgive you i mean not that easy you understand what i mean but if it's you you actually want to do something to hurt yourself so you can feel oh i have finally redeemed myself i finally you know i deserve this and now i can finally god's love i'm deserving of god's love now you need to remember that god loves you because god is love not because of who you are per se he loved you so much even before you were here i mean he loved all of us so much that he gave his son to die for us so that we can have easy access to him it was never about you it was never about you because the people that he was dying for those are the people that even killed his son those people were not quote and unquote righteous they were not the best people on earth but god still loved them because it was because of them because of us now that he did all of that so and even scripture even says that nothing can separate you from the love of god so all these things that you feel like oh i'm doing this god is, does not love me again he doesn't want me in his sight and everything you are actually just in your own head and enabling the devil because all that is just all that is just crap it was never about who you are or what you do or how much tithes you give or how much offering you give or how much you portray yourself as the most godly person uh abba's beloved and everything it, it was never about that god just loved you because god is love that is who he is you understand there's this there's this spoken word by like a song slash spoken word by hosanna wong i don't know if i'm pronouncing it right but i'm going to put the link in the description and i'm also going to put the name here in case you want to search for it by yourself um in the spoken word she actually you know says all the things that god calls us in the bible because, because whenever we speak about judas now we always say oh judas is carrier the one that betray, betrayed jesus the one that came because we already have you know names for him 
and that's the way when you know we sing let me just say someone that you know that is always a liar or lying or whatever or you always lie a lot i'm just giving that example you have already labeled yourself as a liar the devil has already allowed you to think that oh this is who i am i can't change this is you know i'm a liar i'm a thief or oh, i'm not a thief i'm not a liar in the name of jesus you get my point but you have to constantly remind yourself of what god calls you of the names that he has for you of who you really are you know whatever the devil is telling you is not who you are your sin is not who you are it was never who you are i mean god knew you from the beginning from the moment he created you he gave you a name he gave you purpose you understand you need to constantly remind yourself of that because the devil works over time in fact over time is an understatement the devil works over time when it comes to everybody's matter not even just your matter because he does not want you to experience god he doesn't want you to have a relationship with god he will call you those names he will remind you of the things that you always do that you that that you feel like oh i can never get over it i'm still sinning and everything he will remind you of that and that was what he did to judas you are a betrayer you are a liar how can you do this how can you do that and he led him to death peter felt remorse he cried you know felt all these things same things that he felt but you know he went to the right path and knew that okay i can actually come back and change my ways and do better and he actually did better be a peter today don't be judas don't be judas don't be like judas don't make the devil happy because all you should think about is ways that will please god doing things that will please god not to displease him and you actually not accepting forgiveness from him not forgiving yourself because you know they say oh forgive those who trespass against you and god will also forgive you i hope you know that if you don't forgive yourself you're actually hindering yourself from getting forgiveness from god also so you know this is this is just your reminder this is just your reminder that if you ever feel like you've done something so much that god will not want you again even if it's the hundred and one time i promise you he still wants you he still has open arms he still his mercy is new every single day every single morning okay it never stops you still have the opportunity to repent you still have the opportunity to come to him god is no man god is not that your friend that will cut you off he's not you that will cut somebody else off so this is just your friendly reminder i've come to the end of this video and i really really hope that i made sense because i usually don't plan the lessons per se i just you know speak as i am led and i hope that you've also learned one or two things from this episode if you did please don't forget to like this video don't forget to subscribe and, and before i go i've already pondered on this in this episode a lot but i still need to remind you of this tiny but not so tiny detail that you need to know and that is that god loves you oh no wait sorry <laughs> i love you okay but god loves you more he loves you more he wants a relationship with you please 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 always be reminded of this okay anyways thank you so much for watching this video i hope you enjoyed it See you in my next video. Toodles. Bye.